the legendary M1 Abrams tank has been on the testing ranges and battlefields for nearly 50 years, saving dozens or even hundreds of crews who were able to unleash hellish fury on their enemies while surviving dozens of blows from the enemy tank's main guns. It is the backbone of the armored forces of the United States military, and several US allies as well. This is all thanks to American and British engineering that has stood the test of time. The M1 Abrams is a third-generation American main battle tank designed by Chrysler Defense, later to be purchased by General Dynamics Land Systems. Although the design of the tank started in 1972, the actual production was not until 1979. The first tanks entered service in 1980 as the main battle tank of the United States Army and Marine Corps. There are three main operational Abrams versions, the M1, the M1A1, and M1A2, with each new iteration seeing improvements in armament, protection, and electronics. In this video, we're going to take a look at what makes these tanks so special and why America uses the M1 Abrams tank. Before we get started, if you do enjoy this video and would like to see more just like it, remember to give us a like and subscribe to our channel. The M1 Abrams main battle tank is the namesake of the late General Crichton W. Abrams, former Army Chief of Staff and commander of the 37th Armored Battalion. The purpose of the vehicle is to provide mobile firepower for armored formations and sufficient capability to successfully destroy any opposing armored fighting vehicle in the world, while also providing protection for its crew in any conceivable combat environment. Approximately 10,288 Abrams have been built to date and have been used in various battles, including the Persian Gulf War, the war in Afghanistan, the Iraq War, the Egyptian Revolution of 2011, the Iraqi Civil War, and the Saudi Arabian-led intervention in Yemen. The need for the M1 program came about because of the failure of the MBT-70 program. The Abrams were faster models, peaking at more than 45 miles per hour. Although on the original models of the Abrams, the gun was only a 105mm rifled cannon, the later models were increased to a 120mm smoothbore cannon with 40 Sabo rounds controversially made from depleted uranium, which gave it enough power to punch through nearly anything. The major contribution of the tank was the armor and engines. The armor is Chobham armor, which was the contribution of the British. This armor is a mixture of steel and ceramics, but the major design contribution was the use of a honeycomb-like structure that broke up the molten metal jet that comprised a shape charge explosive and absorbed its energy. The result was armor that shrugged off shells fired at point-blank range, which is great protection against highly explosive rounds, kinetic energy penetrators, and armor-piercing rounds. The tank is powered by a gas turbine engine adapted from aircraft use. This beast of a tank measures in at 32 feet long, 12 feet wide, and 8 feet high, with a weight of between 61 and 73 and a half short tons. The first M1 rolled off the assembly line in 1978, and by 1985, the first modifications were requested, which is when production shifted to the M1A1. The main weapon on this Abrams is the M256 120mm smoothbore cannon designed by the Rheinmetall Corporation of Germany. Engagement ranges approaching 4,000 meters were successfully demonstrated during Operation Desert Storm. As with virtually every tank ever fielded by the US, the familiar 50 caliber Browning M2 heavy barrel machine gun, the Ma Deuce, is located in a powered mount at the commander's station and is equipped with a three power magnification sight. The loader is provided with a 7.62 mm M240 machine gun and another M240 is mounted in line with the main gun of the tank. This is in a fixed mount and is aimed with the main gun to suppress enemy ground troops. The Abrams accommodates four crew members, the commander, gunner, loader, and driver. Both the commander and gunner are seated on the right side of the turret, the loader on the left, and the driver at the center front of the hull. The commander station is equipped with six periscopes, which provide all-round 360-degree view. The independent thermal viewer provides him with independent, stabilized day and night vision with a 360-degree view, automatic sector scanning, automatic target queuing of the gunner's sight with no need for verbal communication, and a complete backup fire control system. The commander is capable of firing the main gun independent of the gunner. The gunner's primary sight line of sight, 
was developed by the Electro-Optical Systems Division of Hughes Aircraft Company. The night vision thermal imaging system creates an image based on the differences of heat radiated by objects in the field of view. The thermal image is displayed in the eyepiece of the gunner's sight, together with the range measurement to within 10 meters of accuracy from a Hughes laser rangefinder, which is integrated into all of the fire control systems. The Abrams also has an onboard digital fire control computer. Range data from the laser rangefinder is transferred directly to the fire control computer, which automatically calculates the fire control solution. The gunner or commander manually inputs the data on the ammunition type and temperature and the barometric pressure, and the weapon is prepared for engagement. The driver's station is equipped with a standard array of gauges and monitors, reflecting the condition of vehicle fluid levels, batteries, and electrical equipment. The driver will have either three observation periscopes or two periscopes on either side and a central image intensifying periscope for night vision. The periscopes provide 120 degrees field of view. The night vision equipment enables the tank to maneuver at normal daytime driving speeds, in darkness, and in poor visibility conditions, such as in the dust and smoke encountered on the battlefield. The turret is fitted with two six-barreled M250 smoke grenade launchers, one on either side of the main gun. The standard smoke grenade contains a phosphorus compound that masks the thermal signature of the vehicle to the enemy. A smoke screen can also be laid by an engine-operated system. The M1A1 also has a mine-clearing blade system. It is electrically operated and is capable of clearing surface or buried mines up to six feet in front of the tank's path. The plow produces a window of soil that is filled with mines. This window must be reduced using a mine rake or by laying a mine-clearing line charge alongside the window and detonating it. The self-protection combat roller exerts high pressure onto the ground ahead of the tracks of the host vehicle to target pressure-activated explosive devices in order to actively provide routes. It can be operated on concrete, asphalt, gravel, and hard dirt roads. The system comprises two four-wheel roller gangs to protect the vehicle tracks which stow neatly to minimize its impact on the vehicle operation and mobility when not in use. An optional magnetic duplicator can also be fitted to help protect the equipment from the effect of magnetic influence fused mines. The surface clearance device is used to clear surface laid mines and IEDs from roads, trails, and rough terrain. A V-blade is for clearing routes, and a straight angle blade is used for clearing staging and assembly areas. The Vehicle Magnetic Signature Duplicator increases the effectiveness and survivability of countermine equipment by causing the standoff detonation of magnetic influence mines at a safe distance ahead of the tank. It generates a multi-axial magnetic signature optimized for passively fused magnetic influence fused mines. The system comprises four emitter coils, two associated power boxes, and a magnetic signature duplicator control unit. The M1 Abrams tank has not only fought battles for the US military, they have also been used by the Australian Army, Egyptian Army, and the Saudi Arabian Army, to name but a few. And for future battles to come, the Republic of China Army have shown great interest in the tanks, along with the Peruvian Army and the Brazilian Armed Forces. This is one machine that shows great promise of continuing for many years to come, and we can definitely see why America would not be without it. What do you think of the M1 Abrams tank? Are there any other feats of engineering you'd like to see us cover? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give us a like and subscribe to our channel to get our latest videos straight to your notifications. Thanks for watching.